Hi everyone, my name is Nia and today I'll be painting a bouquet of forget-me-not flowers. It's very simple and quick to paint and since Valentine's Day is coming, I thought I would paint something that would be suitable to turn into a card. Since I'm going to be painting these flowers freehand, let me just start by showing you the basic shapes which are super simple. These are just going to be small five petaled flowers and I like to paint on the petals first before the center. With this in mind, I would leave a little bit of space at the center. This way the petals are not touching each other in the middle and you have the space to paint on the yellow center later on. So here I'm drawing out a few and rotating the flowers for a more natural composition. And if this is something that is a bit hard for you to visualize, you can always draw out as many as you would like as warm up. I'm also going to introduce different angles to the flowers for variation and more natural look. And it's more or less the same, but instead of drawing out all the petals flat, I only draw one flat petal, which would be the one at the back, and the rest would be slightly skewed to the direction of where your flowers are facing. What I mean by skewed is that the petals which are closer to us will have more foreshortening going on so they're more likely to look like they're thinner or shorter and a bit distorted. My tip is to draw out the flat petal first at the center of where the flowers are going to face which I've indicated by shading here and the rest will follow. This way it's much easier to angle the flowers accordingly. So here I'm just drawing them out again in different angles to demonstrate to you guys but just like before I would suggest for you to keep drawing them out until it's a bit easier for you to visualize and understand so the painting process if you are going to paint it freehand will be much more comfortable. Next, if you want to take this further for more exaggerated angles, there will just be more foreshortening to the petals including the one that is most distant to us and everything will just look a bit more thin all together including the center where the circle turned into more of a thin oval. The last angle that I'm going to include in the composition is from the side or the back of the flower. So the back of the flower is showing instead of the center. This is actually very simple. I'm just going to draw out the petals bunch together on one side where the flower is facing and then connect them all together at the bottom with the sepal without the center showing. I'm also going to add leaves. For the leaves, I'm going to do small rounded leaves, but I'm going to mix this up with just some standard basic leaf shapes, which sort of look like an eye. Then for extra fillers, I'm also going to include larger leaves as well as small budding flowers and the tiny flower buds. For some of the budding flowers, I like to bunch them closer together or maybe only do like a single or two petals. As for the larger leaves, I'm going to make them a bit wrinkly so they don't look so flat and thick. And to do this, I'm just going to wiggle the lines which is what I'm also going to do with my brush later on as I paint. Just like the flowers, I want to play with the angles where they're facing. So some might be facing upwards, some might be facing downwards. You can also even add in folds if you would like to. After this, I'm going to show you how to paint a small bouquet just as warm up or exercise. But before that, let me just show you the colors that I'll be using. Leadproof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Furious Green by Roman Schmal. New Gamboge by Daniel Smith. Ultramarine Finest by Schminka. Chinese White by Holbein. Yellow Ochre by Holbein. And Vermilion by Holbein. For the flowers, I'm going to use a mix of Chinese white and ultramarine finest to create a baby blue or a light pastel blue color. It's up to you though, I think there are pink forget-me-not flowers, I just find that this is more iconic. But anyway, let me just show you how I paint on the individual petals. I like to shape the petals by outlining it and then filling the rest in with my brush. You can see that I've left out a little bit of space in between for me to paint on the yellow later on. As exercise or warm up, you can try to do as many of these, which is the simplest angle for you to paint, and repeat it until you're comfortable with the brush control and the paint load. 
After that, I want to make sure that the blue petals are completely dry or you can also use a hair dryer to make the drying process quicker. Then I use a thick consistency of new gamboge to paint the yellow center. Once you're comfortable painting the easiest angle, now we try to tilt the angle slightly. So this is where I use the one flat petal to give me the direction of the angle of where the flowers are facing. And after that, I try to skew the rest of the petals slightly depending on where the flowers are facing. Here, I'm going to paint a few angles according to how I drew it out. But if you still find it a bit difficult to visualize it, you can try to sketch it out again and try to paint right after you sketch. Just like the previous ones, I'm going to dry it off with a hair dryer, then use a thick consistency of new gamboge to paint on the center. This time, because they're slightly angled, the yellow circle has now slightly turned into an oval. As for the last angle, I'm going to show some flowers looking from the side or the back. So for these ones, I'm just going to paint on the petals on one side. For these ones, you have the option of either not painting on the center or in some cases, you can also show a little bit of the yellow peeking through the petals depending on how they're positioned. Now I'm going to paint on loose petals by just painting larger as well as smaller ones using one brush stroke and these ones will act as the tiny flower buds. Next, I switch to my pointy round brush and I use a thick consistency of Aquarius green to paint on the sepals. I just attach them to some of the flowers which are facing the side or the back and then I follow it up by painting on really thin stems. If there are a bit more space, I like to also branch out some of the stems and then add smaller flower buds or small round leaves using Aquarius Green. I'm also going to paint on leaves on either side of the flowers if there's a bit of space. As for the larger leaves, I like to use my pointy round brush so I can start with a thin stem then continuing on with a bit more pressure to create the leaves. I personally like to play around with the pressure of the brush while wiggling it to create the thicker parts of the leaves. However, if it's a bit too uncomfortable for you to do that, you can also draw out the outline and then fill it in. After that, I added the stems underneath the flowers. I'm just going to add a few to look like they're growing out from the stem and I try to also bunch them together. After I have all these elements down, I like to fill some of the composition if some parts are still looking a little bit empty and I just use my round brush so I can paint on tiny flower buds. And that's pretty much it. You can practice as much or as little as you would like to until you're comfortable painting freehand. So I've basically gone over the method of painting these flowers. As for the final painting, I'm going to just make a bigger version of the bouquet. I'm not going to narrate too much and I'll also leave this in real time since it's a quick and simple painting so you can hopefully paint along side by side. If you guys need a little bit of inspiration, I didn't really have this picture right in front of me when I was painting this, but I like how everything is composed. I really like the natural composition of the bouquet and how it looks kind of rustic and charming. So I'm just going to leave a link to this picture in the description box in case you want to take inspiration from it. Getting back to the painting, I started out by painting the flowers at the center of this page. I started with the easiest angle which is front on and as I expand the position, I try to play with the angles very subtly and I try to also position the flowers closer together and a bit more condensed in the middle. But as I get to the outer edges, I try to scatter the position more as I get further away from the center to create the natural composition that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to continue painting the flowers and I'll get back to you guys once I'm ready to move on to the next step. Meanwhile, I hope you guys enjoy painting along to some calming music.
Now that I've painted on a fair amount of flowers, you can see that I tried to fill in the gaps to make the flowers more condensed in the middle. However, sometimes the space is a little bit awkward, so I tried to find an angle for the flowers which will suit the space and play around with the size of the flowers as well. Sometimes I like to also overlap some of the flowers, but I try to not do too much of it. If not, everything will end up looking like a big blob. As I get closer to the outer edges, I start to add flowers which are positioned in more extreme angles, so from the side or the back, and I also try to add some with only a couple of petals as budding flowers. At the bottom, I try to also angle the flowers which might be limping forward, in which case I would paint them like it's a side angle. Now that I have a good amount of flowers, I'm going to add on the center. If not, I find that the more petals, the more confused I'm going to be figuring out which petals are together as one flower. So here, I just want to group them together by painting on the center. Since I'm not going to paint the center for some of the flowers, I want to join them all together by painting on the sepal as well as the stem. You really don't have to paint this in certain order, so whatever I feel like, I would also add on the leaves. It's completely up to you to go back and forth and fix up the composition until you're satisfied with it, depending on your own taste once you're comfortable painting all the elements.
From time to time, I like to look at the whole painting and here I can see there are some small spaces which needs to be filled, but the space is a little bit too small for flowers. So I'll add on tiny green flower buds and then I'm going to continue that on by painting an oval on top of those small green buds. While the blue is still loaded on my brush, I'm also going to add on some other loose flower buds or some smaller flower petals as well. I realized I left out one yellow center for this flower so I'm just going to go back to it and then go back to painting the stems. As you can see, I'm just going to continue going back and forth until I find the density that I'm looking for. This is a little bit different to the demonstration but I decided to use a thicker consistency of Aquarius green and I just feel like this would break up some of the flowers which are placed really close together. I find that using the darker value helps our eyes to decipher and separate those individual flowers. As you can see, some of the petals that I'm painting doesn't even look that nice or accurate. Once you have a few good looking flowers, your eyes can actually make out the rest of the shapes. So you don't have to worry if you accidentally make a few crooked flowers or petals here and there. You can play around with the placement of the leaves. As you can see here, I like bunching them all together into something that cascades down the bouquet. But it's completely up to you how you want to position them and how you want the overall silhouette of the bouquet to look like. Personally, I didn't really have any silhouette in mind. I just kept on going until I'm satisfied with how they look. I just want everything to look natural instead of it being bunched up together into one compact bouquet. I mainly look for balance, so if I feel like on the left side is a little bit more spacey, I would add more flowers which are further apart to each other on the right hand side and so on. I feel like everything looks quite balanced now so I'm going to add the larger leaves. I'm going to add this to the bottom so it doesn't disrupt the composition of flowers that I've already painted at the top. I'll just paint on the larger leaves as demonstrated earlier in the video while avoiding painting on some of the flowers that I've already painted drooping down at the bottom of the composition.
At the bottom of the bouquet, I'm going to paint on a few stems which are bunched together and this will act as the starting point where the bouquet or the stems are going to be tied together at the bottom. So here is where I will extend those stems downwards. I'm going to put a bit more pressure when I'm painting these stems because I want them to act as the thicker main stems of these flowers. I'm also using a thicker consistency so the color is darker. As I get to the bottom, I want to somewhat angle them outwards, but I still want the length to be different to each other, just to stick to the natural rustic theme. This part of the painting is completely optional. If you like everything to be blue, that's fine, you can skip this step. But as for me, I feel like I want to break up the blue slightly. So I used a thin consistency of vermilion and mixed it with the previous blue mixture to create a muted purple color. I'm going to paint this over some of the flowers as well as adding some additional pink or purple flower buds. Lastly, I'm going to tie this bouquet together and I'm going to use a very thick consistency of yellow ochre. For the tie, I'm going to paint a few curved lines going downwards horizontally and I'm also going to finish this off with a couple of bows. The bow is really wet so I just want to completely dry it off so I don't accidentally smudge it. We've only used one color, the bow looks really flat and everything's just combined together into a blob. So I'm going to separate the layers by going over certain areas using bleed proof white. Because the white looks really different to the brown, I'm going to go over that white area using new gamboge and this will just look like a lighter brown color. I'm quite happy with the composition, now I'm just going to add some final adjustments. I decided to add a little bit of detail to the leaves, so here I'm just painting on a line in the middle as the midrib using a thick consistency of Aquarius green. This is completely optional, but as decoration, I felt like adding very delicate and small filler flowers. I'm just going to paint them using this Aquarius green as tiny budding flowers. Because the stems here are very delicate, if you want to add this on, you can also use a smaller brush for this. So that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys don't mind this format of a simpler and slower video where you can really paint side by side with me. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!